Hi everyone, it's Craig Campbell from Pastor Craig's Vintage Cards and continuing on with this 1956 deep dive look at the, the cards from the series. And today we've got Ray Boone, a third baseman with the Detroit Tigers. And as we look at this card, you can see that uh, the action shot here, it looks like they're playing maybe the New York Yankees and Ray Boone is playing at third base and looks like uh, they've had a collision or a play at third base. And uh, Boone is about to be toppled over. And uh, you can see the Yankee player there looking. Just a real nice uh, a headshot there of Ray Boone. And uh, the back of the card, you can see he was born in 1923 in San Diego, California. Six feet tall, 182 pounds. And uh, Ray Boone's got a, quite an interesting story. And, uh, of course, many of us may know actually more about his son, and his grandson, and that's part of the story as we get looking here. On July 15th of 2003, Ray Boone was taken in the scene at the All-Star Game at Chicago's U.S. Cellular Field. He said anybody that's not proud in the situation, he said there's something wrong with them. As a patriarch of the first three-generation family in the major leagues, Boone had reason to beam with pride. His son, Bob, spent 19 years as a catcher, primarily with the Philadelphia Phillies and the California Angels. His two grandsons, Aaron, an infielder with Cincinnati, and Brett, a second baseman with Seattle, were both participating in the 2003 Midsummer Classic. The Boone family was not only the first family to have three generations play in the majors, but also the first and only family to have all members in each generation participate in the All-Star Game. Ray was a two-time All-Star for Detroit in 1954 and 56. Bob was a four-time All-Star in 1976, 78, 79, and 83. Another son, Rod, played in the Kansas City Royals and Houston Colts minor league systems, and Ray's daughter, Terry, was a champion swimmer. Boone played in 89 games and batting a solid 306 in the minor leagues with Wausau, but his baseball career was put on hold when he enlisted in the U.S. Navy in 1942. He missed the 43, 44, and 45 seasons. After his discharge in 1946, the Indians assigned Boone to the Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania Class A Eastern League. In 1947, Boone was assigned to Oklahoma City of the Class A Texas League, where he began the season splitting catching duties. When injury struck the club, they asked Boone to finish a season at shortstop, and he average went up slightly to 264. A spring training opened in 1948. Cleveland player manager Lou Berdu, Boudreau at, kept Boone at, as a third string catcher. But Boone then went to the minor leagues and his bat caught fire, and he was leading the league with a 355 batting average when the Indians recalled him on August 27th. Because Boone played in only 87 games at Oklahoma City, he fell short of the 100-game minimum needed to qualify for the batting title. Boone made his debut with the Indians on September 3, 1948 in St. Louis. He relieved Boudreau at shortstop midway through the first game of a doubleheader and doubled in a run in the eighth inning. For the month, Boone appeared in six games and had five plate appearances. Because he had been called up in August, he was eligible to play in the World Series, in which the Indians faced the Boston Braves. In Game 5, Boone faced Braves great Warren Spahn as he pinch hit for the right fielder, Walt Judnich, in the 8th inning. Spahn, who was working in relief of Boston starting pitcher Nels Potter, struck Boone out on the way to an 11-5 victory. It was Boone's only appearance in the World Series, the Tribe came back to win Game 6 behind starter Bob Lemon, and Cleveland won its first World Series since 1920. On June 6th of 1949, Boudreaux named Boone his starting shortstop when the player manager took over at third base to replace a slumping Ken Keltner. Boone responded by hitting the first two home runs of his career on June 15th at Fenway Park. Boone played in 76 games as a shortstop for the Tribe and committed 21 errors. His batting average was a modest 252. Boone struggled in learning his new position 
and also replacing the popular Boudreaux, who, while nearing the end of his playing career, had starred for nearly a decade for Cleveland. Boone had a pep talk with himself. He said, Raymond, what now? Boone said, you have been a catcher all of your baseball life. Now you are told you could be a good shortstop. You belong to Cleveland, and the Indians already have a great shortstop in the American League has ever seen, according to Connie Mack. The tribe faced many major changes as they approached the 1950 season. Out of options for minor league assignment, Boone could, couldn't be sent back to the minor leagues without being exposed to other teams to take him. So they kept him on the team, and Boone did okay. He batted 301 in 106 games, third best on the league on the team behind Larry Doby and Dale Mitchell. He was released on November 21st. Blue Bordeaux was. He was released on 21st, and he signed with the Red Sox. And Al Lopez replaced Lou Bordeaux as the Cleveland manager. Boone now had the shortstop position all to himself. Nevertheless, he could never quite seem to secure in the short... He never seemed secure in the shortstop spot. Having so-so seasons in 1951 and 52, batting 233 and 263, and he had made 26 and then a league-leading 33 errors. General Manager Hank Greenberg continued to back Boone. He said, many people in Cleveland think we ought to get rid of him, but I know at least four of the teams that would grab him in a hurry. And Boone continued to play the shortstop as he beat out uh, Strickland in 1953. But after the Yankees had swept the Indians in a four-game series just before the t- trading deadline, Greenberg traded Boone to the Detroit Tigers. Boone's offensive the Boone's offense and defense improved dramatically as a result of his relocation to third base after joining the Tigers. In 31 games at shortstop, he had made eight errors. After the trade, Boone played 97 games at third base for Detroit, making only 14 errors. He hit 312 with 22 home runs and 93 runs batted in in only 101 games for the Tigers. Boone tied a major league record, which has now since been broken, by hitting four grand slams in that season. Fans voted Boone to be the starting third baseman at the 1954 game, and the game took place back in Cleveland. And so he went back home and started in his old hometown, and Boone hit a home run, a solo shot off of Hall of Famer Robin Roberts. Boone ended that 1954 season with a .295 average, 20 home runs, and 85 RBIs. In 1955, Boone had really had some real health struggles. He had suffered from aching knees, and it had gotten worse and worse. The doctors had discovered that he had calcium deposits in his knees, a condition which he'd really suffered since he had been a child. In 1957, they moved Boone to first base, hoping to minimize the wear and tear on his body. In 1958, the Tigers added Billy Martin to play shortstop, and Harvey Keene went to center field. And Boone's former teammate, Jim Hegan, came from Cleveland. And Boone started the season at first base for the Tigers, but he finished the year playing the same position for the White Sox as he was traded in 1958. He was relegated to the bench in 1959. Season started, he played sparingly, and the White Sox dealt Boone to the Kansas City Athletics. Boone was claimed off of waivers later in August by the Milwaukee Braves, and he stayed with the Braves in 1960 before being dealt to the, Red, the Boston Red Sox. And he was released by the Red Sox on September 14th. Boone didn't think he could be of much value to any team. He finished the year, his career with a 275 average, 151 home runs, and 737 RBIs. Boone stayed affiliated with the Boston Red Sox for the rest of his life. He had served as a coach in spring training, and then he had also been a scout who signed many, many players for the Red Sox to include Kurt Schilling, Sam Horn, Marty Barrett, Phil Plantier, and Kevin Romine. Boone maintained a long association with the Red Sox. Ray Boone died on October 17, 2004, at the age of 81, as he suffered a heart attack. Now what's interesting is the day that he died, his memor- on his memorial service on October 24th, it was the same day that Kurt Schilling would throw the first pitch to start Game 2 of the World Series at Fenway Park. 
Ray Boone had signed Kurt Schilling into the major leagues in 1986 with Boston. So that's a good look at Ray Boone. And again, just an interesting career. Um, played with Cleveland, Detroit, and Chicago. But his, his two main places were Cleveland and Detroit. And he had a good career, but his son Bob Boone, of course, was a really good catcher. And, and just all of the, the Boone children that played really well. And to be the patriarch of a three-generation family is quite interesting. So, again, Ray Boone, just a nice card. Um, never a great player, but again, the backbone of Major League Baseball. And so I hope you've enjoyed this deep look at Ray Boone and this continued series of looking at the 1956 Topps cards. Uh, for those who are interested, please leave a comment. And if you like it, subscribe. And again, everybody enjoy the hobby. Have a good day.